A few days ago, I made a video in which I said I do not recommend you buy the DJI Digital FPV Goggles Version 2 if you intend to use them with the Cadex Vista ear unit or the DJI Digital FPV ear unit. The reason I made that video was an issue had come to light that could prevent you using your goggles with those ear units if you didn't own the DJI FPV drone. Specifically, if your battery was to go flat on the FPV goggles version 2, they had the potential to switch from the FPV ear unit mode to the FPV drone mode and they would not always give you the option to switch back. This meant you were left stranded, not being able to use your FPV goggles version 2 with the ear units, and the only way to actually get that option back was to either bind the FPV goggles to the FPV drone, or send them back to DJI to get them to switch over. Now, the reason I said do not buy was this issue was very simple to actually cause, and it would happen either with a loose power connector on the goggles, or if you allowed the battery to go flat to about 5.2 volts. Then, when you powered the goggles back up, they would reboot into the wrong mode, and you may end up stranded. Now, since I released that video, I received a massive amount of comments and feedback from people who have had this issue, people who haven't had this issue, people saying it isn't really an issue at all. Furthermore, I actually had some contact from DJI and we discussed this issue at great length and I am pleased to be able to say there is a fix for this coming in the next couple of weeks. At the point of me making this video, the fix may even be out within the next five days, and I have been able to test this fix, and in my testing, it does appear to resolve the problem. As a result of that, I have taken that other video down where I have said I do not recommend you buy these, and I am more than happy to recommend you use the DJI FPV goggles version 2 with the Cadex Vista or DJI ear units moving forward. This issue for me was a fundamental one because it would mean users were stranded with a product they couldn't use simply because the battery went flat. However, as that has now been fixed, it means the DJI digital FPV system is still the best overall digital FPV system there is on the market. Whilst the Fat Shark system is very good, there is no question the DJI system isn't the preferred or best option overall for most people. Now, in the rest of this video, I'm going to walk you through what this issue actually looked like and what the causes were in greater depth. This issue though, as I've said, in the new firmware that's going to be released in the next couple of weeks has been fixed and it isn't something that should affect people moving forward. I've been able to put it on the bench and actually test the new firmware a little bit as well, and it has changed the overall behavior of what happens too. So hopefully this issue has been put to bed. Anyway, let's jump in and actually take a closer look how this would affect people and what would actually happen. So this issue would affect V2 goggle users only when used with the ear units. To explain, the V2 goggles basically dual boot their firmware. They have one firmware for using with the FPV ear system and a different newer firmware for using with the FPV drone. There is a menu option in the goggles to switch between these two firmwares depending on which mode you're using. Now what would actually happen on the V2s is if you was using them in FPV ear unit mode and you were using them with a battery that could go flat, the goggles would enter this low power cycling at about 5.2 volts and you would see the goggles continuously reboot with various different screens coming on the display. Then, when you rebooted the goggles, they'd actually boot back up into the FPV drone mode, which means they were not going to work with the ear units. Unfortunately, for many people, the option to switch back into the FPV ear unit mode was not showing, and this meant they were stranded. This issue wasn't so much that the goggles would reset when the battery went flat, but the fact you didn't have the option to be able to switch back from the FPV drone mode back to the FPV ear unit mode. Now, after the release of that original video, there was a huge amount of comments from people saying, well, why would you allow your battery to go that flat in the first place? Because it wouldn't trigger till about 5.2, 5.15 volts. 
Whilst this would be particularly unusual to happen with the DJI battery, many people who were using traditional LiPos could accidentally forget to unplug their goggles and cause them to go that flat. I'm not saying it would happen in flight, but we've all been there with friends flying and you think you've unplugged something when you haven't. And then what happens is the battery drains down and ends up actually going into that reset and causing the goggles to reset themselves back into the wrong mode. It has also happened to people who've had loose connections as well. So for instance, if your USB was a little bit loose going into the battery or your barrel connector was a little bit loose going into the goggles, if they reset a few times, it could also trigger it to reset into the wrong mode as well. Now, for some people, when this happened, they would still have the option to switch back, but some people didn't and this meant they were left stranded. Now the option would come back when you bound the goggles to an FPV drone but many people didn't have the FPV drone and it really wasn't an acceptable answer to say to people to get your goggles working again you need to go and spend 700 quid on that. Anyway, as I've already said at the start, DJI do have a new firmware coming for this, which does resolve the issue. And I've actually been able to prove that for myself. But what I'm going to do now is actually show you the goggles low power behavior when this happens. Whilst the DJI battery does appear to have a low voltage cutoff in it, the goggles version 2 don't. And there is some pretty horrible behavior on these when the battery level gets down to about 5.2 volts the goggles actually begin to cycle and lose the image on the display and reboot and reboot now whilst this behavior still does happen in the new firmware in my bench tests they no longer boot back into the fpv drone mode and they boot back into the correct mode to use with the fpv ear units also, when I've done the reset test, the goggles have actually been keeping the option there as well, and you've still been able to get back into the correct mode too. Anyway, let's jump in and just take a closer look at this low power behavior itself. So we have the V2 goggles in FPV ear unit mode. You can see this from the on-screen display. We have them connected to a bench power supply and what we're going to do is reduce the voltage down to approximately 5.2 volt or 5.15. At that point, you see the goggles reset, a blue screen appear and the goggles will now enter this cycling behavior because there isn't enough power to keep them going. Now, rather than the goggles actually power down and shut themselves off, they enter this cycling loop where the goggles will show either a colored display, you might get the DJI logo properly, you will get lines on the screen, broken up screen, and a total mess of an image on the display as it completely cycles time and time again. Now, this is obviously going to happen if you're using it with a traditional LiPo battery. And the reality of the system is the lower voltage your LiPo provides to the goggles, the more current it draws and the quicker the power will actually drain from the battery. So the lower your battery gets, the more consumption your goggles have. Now, you can see on the display that is a frankly horrible image. And in the end, you have no choice but to simply pull the power connector and then connect them back up when the power is right. So I let this one cycle a few times and then in the end I did pull the power, set the PSU back to a reasonable voltage and simply powered them back on. What you will see though is when they actually come on as they are booting up now, they actually come on back into the FPV drone mode. So whereas they went off, in the FPV ear unit mode, they come back on in the FPV drone mode. And this is what the issue is. And many people don't have the option to switch back to the FPV ear unit mode. Okay, so as you can see, it is a pretty horrible behavior overall when they enter low battery. It is the same on the new firmware. They still do this cycling thing when it gets to about 5.2 volts. However, 
they do reboot into the proper mode now in my tests at least. Now, just to wrap this whole situation up, the reason I made that video was because I felt the Vision 2 goggles had an issue that was fundamental to people using them with the ear units. To have a product that when the battery went flat could boot them into a different mode that prevented you from using them with the ear units and the only way you could get it to work again was either spend £700 or dollars or send them back was just not acceptable. The issue had been rolling on and on and I was seeing more and more reports from users being affected. That was the reason I made that video. Now that that issue has been resolved, I am 100% more than happy to recommend the FPV system version 2. In fact, there is no question that the FPV system from DJI, whether it be the version 1 or the version 2 goggles or the version 1 and the version 2, is the best digital FPV system overall. The Fat Shark system is good. It's coming on, as you've seen in my other video where I was talking about it. But as long as this system is doing what it should be doing, it is simply the best digital FPV system on the market and I do still highly recommend it. Now that DJI have fixed this issue, we're back to day one where we were and everything is good again. Now, I do want to thank everyone for their comments on that video, the good and the bad. There was a lot of interesting ones to say the least, some people saying that they've had this issue and some people saying that I'm talking nonsense those people who do understand what I was talking about and as I showed in this video understood the reason I said what I said. I'd also like to thank DJI for reaching out to me on this one. They were really good um, about asking what the issue was, asking for feedback, telling me what's been going on and also sharing with me the beta firmware that shows the issue has been resolved. Again, DJI have some absolute fantastic people working for them and I've been more than happy to help them out in the past with issues like this and again, it's really nice to see them address it. I'm not going to go into what it took to make that happen but I'm just pleased that this issue has now been fixed for users because at the end of the day, those were the people who were affected. Anyway, that's it to wrap this whole thing up. As I've said, when the new firmware drops, I will put a quick video out to explain it. If you found this whole saga and situation interesting, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Don't forget to hit the little bell next to it as well. If you'd like to support the channel, there is links to buy me a coffee as well as other things in the description too. There's no links to this stuff anymore because there's no affiliate program, so I can't actually do that. But there is uh, links to buy me a coffee and Patreon and all of the usual stuff too. Anyway, that's it for this one. Thank you very much. And I'll update you guys when the firmware actually drops.